the LADEE mission is there to investigate the dust that you find around the moon, in some cases suspended not far above its surface. If you went to the moon and you tried to live there, lunar dust is actually quite bad for you. Now, okay, clearly you don't take off your, the helmet of your spacesuit when you're outside because there's, there's no atmosphere, so you, so you die or very little atmosphere. But the dust itself nonetheless comes into spacecraft. The Apollo astronauts brought it in. It made them, you know, made, made them feel pretty unwell, actually. It's the sort of thing that I guess if you were asthmatic particularly, you wouldn't want to breathe in in any quantity. So there is some interest in understanding it from a human health point of view. When you have the Chinese sending a spacecraft that is going to land on the moon and produce a cloud of dust that is going to go into space and probably detect it and affecting the measurements of the other spacecraft, which is in orbit, then you say, well, there's a conflict here because uh, uh, we are contaminating, in a way, also with the, with the rocket fuel of the, of the spacecraft, which is landing, contaminating the atmosphere, thin atmosphere of the moon. And they say, well, that will be a, a kind of spoiling the, the, um, the experiment of, the, of, the, of NASA. As the spacecraft delivering it comes down, it'll be firing rocket engines to slow down. There'll be a lot of exhaust from that. It would also kick up dust as it comes to land. And all of that will go into the, what there is of a very, very thin lunar atmosphere. So the LADEE mission should be able to detect that because it'll be there, it'll be, it'll be operating for a while before the Shanghai rover lands. So it can see the sort of before and after. And then it can watch and it can see how long it takes for the dust to settle out, or literally settle out actually, and for the, uh, the exhaust fumes to dissipate. So it provides the Americans with quite a nice test in that sense. There are several craters and one of them is very deep. It's about, uh, it's nearly two kilometers deep. And it will provide, Changi is going to try to explore, if it lands in the right place, try to explore the edge of that crater and then pos possibly go inside and explore different uh, rocks at different uh, uh, depths. And that will provide information that we haven't got yet. Despite of all the Apollo missions and all the Russian uh, uh, probes that went to the moon, we still don't have uh, a lot of information and the Chinese may provide this. There's no formal collaboration between the Chinese and the Americans on this, and that's partly there's various defense restrictions and, and classified sharing of technology and so on. Uh, and in a sense, it's regrettable because the, the countries of the European Space Agency collaborate with China, and I, I suppose you have to have certain protocols in place. But there are some American scientists who would prefer things to be different, and certainly as the Chinese space exploration develops, I suspect that the Americans at some point will come to review that. So whether it gets in the way very much or not is a good question, but certainly I think both countries would probably benefit, at least scientifically, from more cooperation. Space exploration is a huge enterprise and no single nation can tackle that alone. It has to be a collaboration, as in the case of the International Space Station, and in the future, missions to the Moon, missions to Mars, and, and, and further, they will have to be international.